Okay, Ivana, go ahead and make a quick explanation about why we're recording. Hi, hello, this is a CC meeting. Uh, we are supposed to be live streaming, but there is an issue on YouTube. So therefore we are recording this meeting, which will be posted right after. Uh, so apologies, but it's not up to us, but uh, the YouTube is not collaborating today. Uh, the first uh, topic of our agenda is uh, the new usual and uh, it's the overall big picture uh, about Europe and post-COVID life and what's DM's role in it. Uh, does anybody want to give an overview of the last week perhaps, Janis? I'll have a go if, if I may because um... Well, good evening, everyone, um, comrades, uh, audience. Uh, yesterday, we had a very big announcement in Brussels. Are you all feeling the excitement? Um, the European press and beyond is replete with reports of a major breakthrough. And I, it, you know, when, when I read these reports, I never cease to be amazed by the capacity of journalists consistently and periodically to be all triumphant and then two days later after they study the, the actual numbers to feel deflated and say ah oh, it was a dud and then the next time there is an EU announcement again to feel the same degree of triumph. Uh, <laughs> so look let's go straight to the, to, 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 to the, to the meaning of it all. Um, this is the first time that there was an attempt to create a package that was fiscally significant, that it made a macroeconomic difference. That is a package that had not loans, but uh, transfers, and transfers between states, so that um, some kind of rebalancing of the Eurozone economy would take place or the European Union economy would take place. Uh, the gist of it is that um, what uh, the President of the European Commission yesterday announced, even though it sounded like a big number, 750 billion, compared to what Merkel and Macron had proposed, um, it's worse than what M Macron and Merkel proposed. Uh, when I look at the numbers, because I studied them very carefully, what I see is 310 billion in grants, which sounds reasonably okay, not 500, which is what Merkel and Macron wanted, 310 billion in grants and 250 billion in loans. Now, loans are irrelevant. The last thing Italy needs, Spain needs, Greece needs is more loans. We can get loans anyway. You know, the, the, we live in deflationary times, interest rates are very low, even for quasi bankrupt states and, and companies. So what matters is the grants. Um, if you look at those grants, we're talking about a period of uh, three years, 2021 to 2024. Um, and if, if, if you look at the distribution of those across the years and compare it to the European Union's overall income, we're talking about a 0 0.6, 0 0.56 to be precise, 0.56% of GDP for three, for three or four years, every year. That's not zero, but it's nothing to celebrate, right? It's not something to write home about. Especially if you take into consideration the fact that this is not an agreement, this is a proposal. We already see that there are going to be demands from Holland, from Denmark, from Austria, from Sweden, maybe from other countries, for rebates. Every rebate that goes back to the government of a state uh, means that the rebalancing between countries, the mutualization, if you want, dies. So if, if everybody effectively takes back from the Commission what it gives to the Commission, then there are no transfers within the European Union. So we don't know to what extent there will be rebates. We know that they will be asked for. The more rebates you hear being approved in the end, the smaller the redistribution within the European Union. But even if there are no rebates, we're talking about tiny redistributions, very small redistributions. We're talking about, for instance, you know, in the case of Italy, 
which needs and is getting a large chunk of that money if you look at it you know it's been announced that italy will get something like 81 82 billion over two years uh, over four years but if you took, take into consideration the amount of money that italy will have to pay to the commission to support the commission's borrowing if you take into consideration the rebates if you take into consideration the fact that a lot of that money is going to be tied up with austerity because they made that announcement very clear yesterday that the whole process is going to be tied up to the European semester. For those who are not familiar with the term, that means that it goes hand in hand with fiscal consolidation that is consistent with the fiscal compact, which means that they will give Italy something like 1% of GDP, but at the same time they will take back from the Italian budget and they will demand austerity from the Italian budget. So allow me to just finish off by saying that if you take both into consideration, the monies that will be transferred to the states and the austerity that will be demanded from those states, take Italy. Italy, in my estimation, is going to have a budget deficit of about 10, 11% next year. So if they demand 5% austerity and they give Italy 1% from this package, the overall effect is 4% of GDP in austerity for Italy. So what happens is that the press celebrates the positive things, right? But it forgets to tell you the austerity costs that it will be imposing in order to grant those positive things. So, in a sense, from a DiEM perspective, and this is how I end, same old, nothing has changed. Since 2010, what does Europe do? It announces big sums of money. Remember in 2010, the Greek bailout, 110 billion, the Irish bailout, the Portuguese bailout, the bailout for the Spanish banks, the, you know, the money that was then afforded Italian banks, big numbers. But all that goes hand in hand with much bigger numbers in terms of, of austerity programs. That's why I'm saying that the same category error that was committed in 2010 is being um, perpetrated. And one final comment, because there have been some interesting statements by smart people who say that, yeah, okay, you're right, this is, uh, you know, not worth celebrating, but an important principle has been introduced. And the important principle is that we are now for the first time borrowing jointly and mutualizing a little bit of debt. So isn't this a breakthrough, at least at the ideological? No, have we not broken the mold which says no mutualization of debt? Look, I can see the point, but I don't buy it. And the reason why I don't buy it is very simple. When you're talking about a Eurobond, genuinely mutual debt, the Hamiltonian moment, according to the Americans, when the states, the colonies of the United States, um, effectively became a federation, when they had a common uh, US Treasury bill, a, a common bond, um, these, th these are common debts, common bonds that are there in order to finance the joint project. Here, if you read the text, it's very clear this is a one-off thing. It happens once. It lasts three years, then it dies. Then what happens after 2024 is the repayment, which is joint, collective. But once these bonds expire, they are never to be renewed. It's written in the rules. Now, a bond which comes together along with a deadline and a particular policy on how to repay it is not mutualized debt. So when the United States issue a debt, the idea is you issue it, a bond, and then you issue another one to roll it over, and then another one, and then another one, ad infinitum. And you'd never say, how you're going to finance it. 
you do not commit to particular taxes that will go here and there and everywhere. So they are trying to, yes, there is an element of debt mutualization, but there is no um, use of this as a mechanism for recycling debts and deficits in any sustainable way. So, in other words, it's a fantastic waste of a good crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Yanis. Uh, Srečko. Yeah, me only speaking if there is, uh, if there is no woman be before me. So I, I'll, I'll give my place if there is someone who, who is a woman and wants to speak. Come on. No? Okay, I just wanted to add, I mean, I, I will not give the macroeconomic perspective. I'm not capable of doing it, uh, and we have Yanis for it. Uh, I just want to give my, my personal assessment of the situation and also to start talking about DiEM's role uh, in this kind of situation. So I agree with Yanis. I mean, the situation is not Greece 2010 and what happened afterwards. Uh, now you have Spain, Italy, uh, many other countries of the so-called periphery. And what I can see here is that uh, maybe it's important to address it, the so-called post-COVID situation, which is, of course, post-COVID only for the privileged West, because you can see that the epicenter is now in Guatemala, Latin America, and it's getting very bad. Uh, but here, at least in these countries of Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and so on, you can see a normalization, uh, which is being manifested uh, by daily politics, which is going back uh, uh, to all the worst things. So, for instance, in Croatia, as soon as they start to talk about the Ustasha and the partisans, about the Second World War, and not mentioning Corona anymore, you know that the situation normalized. Uh, in our context, Ivana knows as well, we have elections coming, national elections, both in Croatia and Serbia, um, which is very interesting because, uh, you know, also this plan, what Yanis just mentioned here in Croatia, is also being presented as a big celebration and so on. But my big fear, and here I come to maybe Advocatus Diaboli and to a question for the CC, is about Diem's role in this situation. Uh, because as far as I can see on the streets, so-called common people, uh, uh, however we call it and so on, they don't really care about Eurobonds, they don't understand it, for them this is like uh, nuclear physics and so on. Uh, so our question is what to do with it. Uh, uh, I have some concrete proposals. I think one goes back to what I mentioned already at one Zoom before. Uh, which is that we really, as DiEM25, need to start focusing on tourism. Uh, uh, because, for instance, in Croatia, more than 25% of the population is uh, working in the tourist sector. Uh, and this is just the formal sector. I'm not mentioning the informal sector, which is probably as much as that. Um, and that's an issue I think DiEM has to start tackling. Uh, another one, and I finish soon because I think we have it in the agenda, is the question of refugees. Um, it's getting really bad here. I guess comrades from Greece can tell us even worse things, but in Bosnia, Serbia, Croatia, and so on, the situation is, COVID situation was really used to militarize, uh, to put it like that, uh, the refugee question even more. Uh, so I think what we have to do, uh, besides campaigning, and we can start talking, it is the progressive agenda. You know, we, we have to return to it. We have to see how to include tourism, uh, what to do with the migration pillar, and more generally, last point, I think since uh, June is coming, and obviously uh, August, part of July, some of us will hopefully, hopefully all of us will have some sort of rest. I think we need to start, maybe not at this Zoom, maybe for the next Zoom, uh, start discussing the plan for June until the summer break and after, and after, after it. Because I think everything what Jan has mentioned, this will come back as a boomerang not immediately, but uh, in autumn, you know. I can see here in Croatia where I'm back, uh, there is still a sort of denial, you know, the sun is back, summer is coming, people still hope tourism will be saved, uh, but it won't be saved. So I, I think that depression and anxiety and uncertainty, which will lead to more fascism uh, and radicalization of society will hit back in autumn, uh, uh, September or so. So I would love us to prepare for it in any way possible. I finish here. I don't want to talk too much. And I can see Jordi, but... Thank you, Srećko. Good point. Jordi. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I agree with both of you, absolutely. Uh, I, I'm going to add that this is not just a country problem. 
it's not uh, uh, Spain against Germany. We said it uh, many times, but uh, it's also a problem between big uh, uh, and small. We we had a an interesting event this evening in Barcelona through uh, a video conference with with Yanis. It was very educational, and it, it was amazing to see all the social agents in in Barcelona agreeing with such a common sense. So uh, uh, maybe in the past, some of these issues were considered radical or uh, uh, extremely different. Nowadays, most of society agrees with uh, what we are saying. Uh, uh, the, they were very worried about uh, the lack of reaction from the European Union. And on the other side, they have a, a, a real big problem of disappearance. Small and, and, and medium-sized businesses, self-employed. Uh, the main problem that we have now in Europe, I think, and this, if this policy goes on, is what is going to happen, is that we're going to, the, the, the small and, and the self-employed are going to disappear. They are not getting any help from anybody. And the only solution sometimes they give is more loans. Well, it's not a question of loans, especially big loans, because it's funny that loans, it's, it's obvious that they are thought for uh, uh, big companies because the minimum amount of this kind of loans, of public loans in Spain, for example, it's 80,000 euros. Most of the self-employed uh, don't do anything with that. <laughs> and, 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 and they cannot have such a loan because they would mm, uh, 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 stand up anymore. So, what, amaz what I thought is amazing is Yanni saying all those things and all of them saying, yes, 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 so we have such a problem. So what we have to do from DM, I think we have to have an educational role. We have to make people realize that there's a, a, another Europe is possible and it just depends on us. And it's not, uh, uh, we don't have to uh, have a, 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 a burn churches or we don't have to be uh, a, a big revolutionary like uh, 18, Hundred, but just common sense, just common sense, and it's possible, and it's not difficult. So I think we have to have more of these events, especially in the south. I think it's going to be a big impact to realize how easy it is to change things, and how, and sometimes Yanni said it. Some of the things that we are saying that we should do, other countries even the United States or the United Kingdom are doing some of those things. So it's not such a radical thing. It's just common sense. And I think at this moment, the European Union has even lost the common sense. Yes, uh, Eric and, and Yanis. Thank you, Ivana. I totally agree with Jordi. And this point about com common sense is incredibly important because the M25, since its inception, was a radical movement of common sense uh, since the beginning. And there is nothing like a, like a crisis to reveal the common sense in radical ideas, right? So it is an incredible window of opportunity for us to present, once again, relaunch, if you like, our ideas in the current context, not so much be tied down by our history, by the 2015 crisis, the renegotiation of the Greek debt, everything that happened since then, but to really squarely shape our narrative around what is happening now and what is going to happen. It is very important that we adapt to this historical moment. Um, and not only that, because DiEM25 is not a household name, I think it's very important that we also prioritize what it is that we attach our name to in terms of what we fight for. In order to become known, it is very, let me put it differently, it's very difficult to become known if our message is we have a solution for Europe, right, which is the European New Deal or the Green New Deal for Europe. It's, it's very difficult to become the movement for saving Europe. It's a big thing. But if we're trying to establish ourselves and to become known, I think it's very important for us to prioritize two, three struggles and become the European household name for those struggles. When people think of the universal basic dividend, that is DiEM25's thing, nobody else's. The Green New Deal, very difficult to do that. But there are other struggles that don't have champions. And I think it's very important for us to identify those struggles and become their champions for Europe, especially in this moment. 
Thank you, Eric. Couldn't agree more. Uh, we have uh, Cici, Simona, and Yanis, and uh, maybe we should uh, go towards uh, the, our position in Italy. Okay, I mean, um, I listened very, very carefully to what Yanis was saying and the, the, the other comrades, of course. Um, I'm slightly as skeptical about this uh, new event, and I'm referring to the EU. Uh, it's not a decision, it's a proposal. I think, uh, to be honest, that um, the European Union, at first sight, at least, uh, in terms of the public eyes, has more or less managed or is trying to plaster over the cracks that has been shown in the past few years, uh, especially with regard to uh, the epidemic crisis, uh, when uh, the, the cracks of the building were visible to to the average European citizen. Um, so with this gesture, with this move, uh, the scenario of a crisis that would be structural uh, on the basis of the EU um, uh, would be become a bit more difficult to prove. Because, I mean, not all people are economists. Uh, the vast majority do not understand this kind of um, uh, objections, which are very well founded uh, by our comrades and Yanis. The vast majority of the people will think that the EU, despite its um, uh, inhuman austerity policies, are uh, Sort of somehow raising stuff to to the level of uh, a carer for for the average EU citizen, where we know this is not the case. In other words, uh, uh, the only way to uh, stick up, uh, stick on to the our uh, sort of um, uh, alternative um, agenda is to push the post-capitalism program a bit more. Uh, otherwise, we are caught in this. Uh, given the situation that we haven't got uh, the media with us, uh, uh, the vast majority of the EU people and the Europeans um, somehow are leaning towards the conservative uh, political uh, powers and representations. Therefore, uh, what we should do, in my opinion, is to, to make a virtue of necessity, as they say, that these are uh, be the only ones who could first prove that this is not a long-term solution, though, I mean, von Leiden's uh, proposal. Uh, there are holes in it, and it, 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 it's a short-term solution, and the only solution is a different kind of Europe, not the EU, Europe, I'm repeating again, that will be based on the very basic uh, ideas that seem to become uh, common ground for the majority of the people because of the epidemic. That is free and public goods and the abolition of flexible uh, labor relationships and precarity. Uh, in my opinion, this is the program that, uh, in which we must excel. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Simona and then Yanis. Um, yeah, I totally agree with everything that has been said. I think that um, definitely we should uh, attach our name to to uh, ideas and uh, symbols, and that uh, these ideas uh, should be concrete proposals. Uh, you know, concrete proposal is a mantra for the, for our uh, board, <laughs> but um, we should uh, uh, convey the meaning of our uh, program through um, simple, concrete proposals that are uh, really. Uh, that are possible 
uh, and mobilize members about it. Uh, call, uh, make a call to action for our members uh, on uh, uh, some symbolic uh, campaigns. Uh, um, I I push for a, a European um, universal dividend uh, as a campaign uh, that we should uh, start. Uh, just uh, call to action to promote concrete proposals uh, from us. Uh, we have uh, we have them, and uh, it's uh, much better than asking uh, Yanis to make the Ampenth uh, conference. Uh, because we need uh, to be a movement and not just uh, uh, ask Yanis uh, what he thinks. Yes, of course, we have, uh, I think, uh, enough policies to campaign for another five years if nothing else would happen. But uh, I, don't, I think it's the other way around. We should find the burning issue and campaign around it rather than find the policy and campaign around it. Yanis. In an attempt to, to bridge this discussion and the next discussion, uh, I want to um, I'll mention uh, the, the questionnaire for DM Italia that I put together. Because that's a, the whole point. Italy is, a, is ground zero of this particular phase of the crisis. Uh, the debates in Italy are particularly lowbrow. <laughs> uh, I was interviewed, uh, an interview of mine was published in La Stampa yesterday, I don't know whether you saw it. Um, and it actually I received today some like 300 emails from Italy saying, oh my God, you know, we never thought of that. All I said was quite commonplace things. So the point I'm making is this, and this is the bridge between this topic and the next topic. We've been discussing now with our Italian comrades, uh, the way to organize the national collective, the role of the electoral wing, what our electoral strategy, if any, should be in Italy, what it is that we should be saying and not saying in Italy, or about Italy in Europe, outside of Europe. That discussion, when it's done in the abstract, is not helpful. It, you, you keep rotating around your axis and you end up nowhere. So I try to put together a questionnaire that I want to hear the answers to. You, you know, usually the people say that you never ask questions unless you know what the answer is. This is not the case in this case, in the, on this occasion. I want to see how our Italian comrades, and also non-Italians in Germany, in Portugal, in Spain, answer those questions about what DiEM should be doing vis-a-vis -vis Italy. I'm not going to recite them. You've seen them. They're in, in, in your reading box. They've been there for a few days. But I think that, you know, having a common narrative in Germany, in Greece, in Italy, in Belgium about what happened yesterday in Brussels and the poverty of the European Union's response to the crisis. Having this common approach, and at the same time saying, okay, what does this mean about Italy? What should we demand of the Italian government? Or what should we say that if we were in, in, in the Italian government, what would we be doing regarding A, B, C, D, E? That is the way to combine the analysis with the uh, movement building process in a country like Italy, in a country like France, in a country, in, a, in every country. So that's point number one. And point number two, we need, keep, I keep saying this, but I'm not working towards it because I'm doing a million other things, but I think collectively you should uh, resolve to work for it, towards it, to, to identify campaigns in Italy that we can all work around across Europe to promote those particular local campaigns in Italy in a manner which is consistent with the process of answering those questions about Italy. Yes, thank you, Yanis. Um, who would like to go next? Maybe Simona, you could uh, give us an overview or Srečko, Srečko. <laughs> yeah, just quickly, I, I, I would love to say, if we are now moving to the, to the, to the next parts of the agenda, that uh, it would be important to send a similar questionnaire to 
to everyone, not just to the Italians, so that we don't turn the Italians into bad apples, but that we actually get the response from everyone, which would be useful. Just this point. So to very, you... very, very quickly, Sergio, look, uh, firstly, there's no, there are no bad, bad apples in, uh, in DiEM or the Euro. Uh, but Italy is ground zero. Like Greece was ground zero in 2015, Italy is ground zero today. So it makes perfect sense to begin with Italy and not to begin with Ireland. Yeah, that's point number one. And point number two, we will do it. But I started with these questions tailor-made for Italy to see if this is a model that we like. Uh, and then remember, every country is different, even though we're, you know, uh, as the, the, you, you remember the opening lines of Anna Karenina, every happy family is the same. All unhappy families are different or are happy in their own way. So, um, you know, we are unhappy families across Europe, and, but we are unhappy in different ways. So the questionnaire in each country must be tailor-made. You can't just replicate it and change where it says Italy, you put Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. Okay, I think that we have all agreed on that, that uh, the questionnaire should be something for each country. Uh, and then we can move to our last uh, agenda topic, and uh, that is something Johannes uh, suggested. It's uh, different, uh, or Johannes, you can just uh, present the it. last one. I think we have more than just this one. Yes, but the last one that we will record. Aha, uh -huh. okay, sorry. <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you, can you hear me? Yes, good. Um, yeah, uh, it's more of a technical um, issue, so uh, I apologize to the YouTube audience. But um, as we are uh, the yeah the coordinating collective for the whole movement, uh, we are getting a lot of requests um, from different members from different countries um, each day, and um, sometimes it's hard to cope with it. And we have been sometimes failing to answer some. Uh, some got lost. Um, so I wanted to propose, since we recently um, discussed the amendments for the um, the amendments for the amendments for the organizing principles, um, and our discussion was very well prepared by Judith um, in the restricted forum space of the coordinating collective, um, with summarizing uh, the different amendments uh, for the different um, sections of the organizing principles. I would like or propose us um, to work more with this um, space of the forum to have uh, each proposal or um, message coming in, not each message, but each, each uh, thing we have to act on to, um, in best case, be listed there, have a clear name and a deadline if there is a deadline, um, have a summary with links to the the broader comment uh, or the message of that has been written to us and as Simona mentioned before already have a proposal so something that we should um, do regarding this message or this proposal for a, signing a petition or something like that um, and um, yeah then we could have a better overview and um, could have a better um, way of working towards answering actually all the messages that we get um, and something additionally very uh, very shortly uh, i would propose that we have a standard reply for messages that we get that um, we kind of don't have to act on but we still acknowledge uh, that has been sent to us thanks thank you johannes that uh, sounds good you did yeah, I think that uh, this could work for the, the big issues where we need input for from five CC members uh, or similar. Um, I see a problem more on, on the smaller side where, where we get a message where actually just one CC member has to uh, send a reply or, or even an acknowledgement like uh, you understood. And uh, we haven't been very good at answering those. The bigger things usually wind up on the CC agenda and they get resolved somehow. But the smaller messages where we really could make a difference uh, I just don't uh, get the reply. So um, I would, um, I have an idea for that, but um, 
maybe I should um, suggest it by uh, by email because um, I, I'm not 100% uh, certain yet of how I want to do it, but I, I have some ideas. Yeah, certainly we can exchange some ideas via email before uh, making a final decision. Eric? Uh, as always, looking forward to Judith's ideas. Um, a quick point on this, because we had a call the other day, some of us discussing the standardization of certain processes in general, right? So also when the CC makes decisions that our national collectors and electoral wings receive information about those decisions and what those decisions mean for them, what they need to do as a result of those decisions before they read it on a newspaper or on our website, right? To improve this internal communication. Um, we also said that we need a form that MCs and EWs need to fill out if they have an official request from the CC so that all the information we get looks the same and it's not chaotic and it's not just emails and whatever. Um, and that also ties in with one of the amendments we passed for uh, one of the all member votes from, I think it was Yanina. Anyway, the point here being that processes are good and we are very good at creating them. Uh, the whole thing falls apart when manpower comes into it, or woman power or person power in any case. The fact that we need people to do these processes, you know, um, so we can have all of these things, but unless we attach a name to the process, um, it won't get done. And there's very few of us who are doing 500 million things at the same time. So uh, it's good, and let's have the emails from you did, and let's discuss this further. But please, comrades, let's keep in mind that we also need to assign these tasks to people. Otherwise, they will not get done as good as the process might be. Just that for myself. Yes, thank you, Eric. There is no process that will uh, do the, the job on its own. We need always to have in mind who is going to do that. Uh, I see Simona and uh, then uh, we can uh, wrap up this uh, item and uh, have another one, uh, which is a proposal from the French NC about the all member vote. Simona. Um, yes. When um, Rosanna uh, came uh, in, in the CC, I thought uh, of uh, uh, preparing an overview of uh, works in progress. Uh, for her, and uh, I, I understood how many tasks we are ongoing, and uh, how um, how it's difficult. We uh, often forget something because uh, there are too many, and uh, uh, often we have uh, no clear idea of uh, who's doing doing what. So um, I thought uh, we should just have a list of them and uh, uh, attach um, one point person that is not necessarily the only one who, who works on it uh, to each task and uh, uh, have a, a constant overview of, of um, what's going on uh, clearly. And of course, the process needs people, uh, but uh, process coordinated uh, and uh, well-engineered uh, process uh, are exactly what we need to uh, to share the load of uh, work and to uh, have process uh, go on. So I suggest to have an overview, prepare an overview of tasks uh, at hand and of works we are doing. Uh, and um, attach one person to each task. And uh, whenever we uh, came to a decision in, uh, in a meeting, uh, we uh, establish who was uh, taking care of it, and we um, mark it in uh, minutes and in our overview of tasks. Yes, and uh, that's something that we were doing when an ad, ad hoc uh, task would come up at the CC meeting, there would be always to do in the minutes and who was tasked for it, the accountability and uh, the actual delivery of the task also counts. Uh, uh, but uh, this info is, uh, um, should not be just for uh, the office and uh, we need not. a list of it. 
uh, I have no list of it. Yes, sure. Of course, we need everything that can improve the communication. I'm just saying that some things were done before. Uh, I see Johannes, and then maybe we can move on to the last agenda topic for yes. the recording. Yes, very quickly, just I'm looking forward to hear what you did, um, ha, has in mind uh, regarding the smaller issues. What the um, internal forum space would provide would be that list, right? Every issue would have one thread and you would see all the threads um, in under one link that you could enter and have this list and that list changing regarding uh, what issues come in and which one we solve and uh, close. Um, but uh, maybe we cannot uh, make a final call on this today and let's move on and um, discuss via email uh, that you will send. Thank you, Johannes, and thank you for bringing up this uh, topic. Now we go to Eric and he's going to explain what is this proposal about. Right. So, uh, as you know, you received the email and we've discussed it in previous CC calls as well. Um, there is a proposal from the French National Collective um, for an all-member vote regarding the campaign on a rent strike for Europe, a European rent strike. Uh, the idea behind the campaign is that we create a... Um, uh, a document that we sort of circulate, what do you call it? A, collecting signatures, my brain stuck, a petition, there we go, a petition. So you would create a petition which we circulate for um, freezing all rent payments um, when obviously that demand is not met in Europe, we call for a rent strike. Uh, now the argument from the French NC is that on the one hand it would be good if we had an all member vote uh, to agree on having this rent strike because it would increase the sort of exposure it would get to the membership and give it uh, a broader audience. But at the same time, it would also give us the sort of the legitimacy, if you like, to um, support a campaign which essentially asks people to break the law, which is not to pay rent. Um, those are the two main arguments uh, for um, having the all member vote from their side. Uh, I will not give you my opinion on it yet. Uh, that's the introduction and uh, happy to hear your thoughts about how we should proceed with this request. Anyone? Srećko. Well, to be, <laughs> to be completely honest, in the last days I didn't really follow it closely. Uh, but my concrete proposal would be uh, that instead of an all-member vote, we actually use the validating council for it. It seems much easier for me. I don't think that we are using the validating council enough. Uh, and I don't think that this should go to an all-member vote. We could just use the validating council. But that's my proposal. I don't know what others think. I don't see anybody else, but and I stuck myself. Uh, I think that's a good proposal. I don't think that we should use an all member vote mechanism for a campaign, which is pretty um, straightforward. Uh, what we could do is um, move them towards a national campaign and um, to, to that way of thinking, because this could be very complicated and very ambitious for, for them to pull off in the first place. And um, I don't see the, the reason for all member vote. Uh, Simona and yes, Sim, I just see. Yeah, Simona. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not sure I agree on a um, rent, rent strike um, as such, but I, I don't know if uh, this is the subject of the discussion. Um, but a rent strike uh, um, hits uh, the uh, householders, uh, and uh, uh, at least in Italy, they are uh, often uh, uh, small. Uh, they are often people uh, that uh, have uh, their uh, retirement uh, rent uh, from uh, from it. So it's uh, not against big companies; it's against uh, people uh, that uh, came out. Uh, a little uh, better 
then uh, renters. Uh, uh, so I, I don't like it. Um, I think we should ask uh, that everybody has uh, an income to pay his rent, uh, not uh, to stop uh, paying rent. Uh, about the old member vote uh, or uh, validating council, um, the, um, I see the point uh, in uh, uh, getting a legitimacy for it uh, from all the membership because uh, we are actually asking them to uh, break the law and it's uh, huge and uh, it requires a consensus uh, from people, not just uh, validating council. Uh, apart from that, I'm totally for uh, uh, giving more uh, power and more tasks uh, to, the, to the validating council. Okay, thank you, Simona. Uh, I have Yanis and Rosanna. I th think Simona has a very good point. It depends on the country, on the city, on the situation. Uh, there are places in Berlin, there are places in London where the, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, rents are being collected by large companies, large corporations. But if, uh, you know, you're renting from a pensioner who has a tiny little apartment to rent and their food supply depends on the rent, do we really want to support that kind of a rent strike? Um, I think it's, um, it's a poor policy. Personally, I would vote against it in an all-member vote. Um, it uh, exposes us to all sorts of criticism, yeah? Uh, and it cannot be pan-European, because in, especially in Greece, most apartments, I mean, I don't know of any apartment that belongs to a large corporation that actually rents it out. Um, you know, the, 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 the place we are renting in Athens, um, I happen to know these people, if we stop paying them rent, they're in serious trouble. And do we really want Diem to come out with a campaign like that? I have much better ideas of strikes, payment strikes, I think. <laughs> For instance, you know, uh, how about identifying an area where the electricity supply is provided by a privatized company? or the water is provided by a privatized company and start a campaign, you know, not to pay the bills for, or, you know, something else you can do, which is really not even illegal. You're not inciting people to do something illegal. You ask people to, re to uh, um, delay paying. So, you know, by two weeks, Th that's enough to do a lot of damage to that company without you actually being illegal. You know, you pay a small fine. And maybe we can create also uh, a fund, a solidarity fund, where we put some money in there so that the people who get fined, you know, ha ha they get the money from, from the solidarity fund to repay the fine. But we do damage a lot to that uh, company as part of a, a campaign to renationalize water. Now, that is a kind of payment strike that I can, go, I can fall behind. It takes some work to identify it. To identify the, the companies, for, for instance, you know, when you had the struggle in Berlin some time ago to renationalize or re municipalize the water, it would be wonderful to have this kind of campaign before it is re municipalized. So, this is the kind of thing that I'm supporting. Uh, Rosanna and uh, Eric. I fully support the uh, proposal of the French NC because I think we need an all member vote on this issue because um, it's quite urgent that we discuss this topic about rent in a transnational way and not everyone in its own in their own countries or in their own cities. I mean, um, we can like um, design the all member vote as such that uh, there um, is the option or that we add that only people who, um, who are renting a flat from a big company, they should uh, be part of the strike, but um, people who are uh, renting a small flat from a like, private owner, um, they should not I mean, it's up to them, but uh, the all member vote, I think we should do because it's important to have this debate in the whole, whole membership.
Okay, Eric. Um, thanks, Ivana. Uh, I think this is exactly the problem. I think Rosanna, with her in the interjection, kind of points to the issue, which is that by making an AMV the initiative to have a discussion, we trivialize all member votes. We completely take away from the institution of an all member vote if we use them just to have a discussion. There are many, many ways in which we can have a discussion. Ian, we can have a discussion on the forum, we can have, we can organize a series of Zooms, discussions, assemblies, you name it. But to start using and abusing official decision-making structures of the movement, just because we want to have a discussion on something, I think it's problematic and I think it creates a very, very bad precedent from which we'll end up having all member votes on all sorts of things and we'll have 30 people voting at the end because everybody's sick and tired of another email about another vote. So I think I think as far as that part of the proposal goes, I don't agree. We shouldn't have an all-member vote regardless. Now, specifically on the campaign itself, um, we have tried to really, really incentivize our national collectives to focus on their own countries because that is their mandate, right? If, if, if our national collective for you know, DiEM25 in France doesn't work on France, nobody will. And indeed, some campaigns, such as the Red Strike campaign, might make perfect sense for the French in the French context, but doesn't necessarily always work across Europe. So I don't think we should condemn the idea. I don't think we should have an all-member vote either. I think they should pursue whatever campaign they want to pursue. At the end of the day, we should empower our national collectives to pursue uh, ideas that they have as long as they make sense. We haven't seen the particularities of the policy that they are recommending. So it's also very difficult to condemn it at this stage. Perhaps there are certain clauses that they would include in this idea that would make it acceptable. Um, so I wouldn't condemn it at this stage at all. Uh, I would encourage them to consider it further and to develop it further. But I, I also agree that I don't think it's, uh, it makes sense to have an all member vote on it at all. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Eric. Um, I see Yanis and Cici. Uh, Simona, is your hand a leftover from before, or you want to, to the floor for this as well? No, I, I want to add something. Okay, so let's have the round of um, Yanis, Cici, and Simona, and then we can close. Look, I'm. I don't want SEC to stop an, an, an all-member vote taking place, as long as the all-member vote is about having the campaign, not have to have this, a discussion about the campaign. So I agree entirely with Eric. No all-member vote to have a discussion. We can have a discussion, you know, as Eric says, whenever. If the French NC wants the OK from members across Europe to have a national rent strike in, in France, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, let's let's say, but not in order to start a discussion, for God's sakes, right? So maybe we can have a, a joint Zoom with the NC to explain to us, you know, to have this this political discussion, um, so that we formulate exactly what the the, the, the question is that goes to the AMV. Um, that's my proposal. My proposal is that we have, you know, in the next Zoom, we bring in the French NC for you know, 20 minutes, brief them that we want to be convinced. That, 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 that they, they are prepared to go ahead with their end strike proposal, okay? And they want the backing, the transnational banking for that national campaign. And then go, let's go ahead with the AMB. But it must be about action, not discussion. Okay, uh, hands are <laughs> raising. So, uh, Sisi, Simona, Mehran, and Judith. No, simply that I want to, to say that I find this very pro this uh, proposal very interesting on the part of the French National Committee, very interesting and very radical, but uh, I, I agree with Eric and Yanis on the way it has to be done. It's important to, uh, to promote this idea. Uh, yes, Simona. Um, on, on the merit of the proposal, I would, focu would focus on income uh, rather than on paying rents uh, or food uh, or so on. Um, as a 
As for uh, water nationalized, uh, renationalized water, um, in Italy we had a successful uh, referendum uh, back in uh, 2011 uh, exactly about uh, um, water as a common god, good and uh, um, about uh, uh, renationalize uh, uh, water softly. Uh, so this could be a very good uh, uh, campaign to do, uh, not paying uh, for water supply. Um, as for all member vote, uh, yes, I, I think um, it's not just about uh, uh, having a discussion, it's about uh, uh, deliberation. And uh, um, all member votes uh, until now are our uh, only way to have a common deliberation. Uh, I agree it's, um, it's not the right tool, but I think we should have uh, some uh, way to um, reach uh, a form of common consensus uh, about uh, uh, ideas and proposals, which doesn't mean uh, uh, we uh, are compelled to do what uh, rises from a discussion, but uh, um, deliberation is not the same as discussion. Uh, last thing, uh, uh, I personally welcome proposals that came from uh, uh, national level but make sense uh, at an European uh, level. So, uh, it's, to me it's totally okay for national collectives to uh, make this kind of proposals and suggesting them to the CC or, uh, and to other NCs. I think that uh, we should maybe postpone this uh, discussion again and uh, the, the good occasion to talk to French NC would be our regular NCCC coordination call which is on second Tuesday of the month so it's uh, very near. Uh, I, I propose that we do that and uh, if that's it. We can close the the first part. Ah, you did. Sorry, I forgot about you. Yeah, um, I wanted to say um, I, it's a very bad uh, precedent to, to have uh, an all-member vote uh, about a campaign because uh, campaigns uh, should be things that anyone can do. You know, you don't even have to ask us. Uh, just you know, go, go write a message to the DSC coordination group saying, who wants to do this campaign with me uh, this week? Um, and you just go out and do it. Um, so uh, I don't think that we should uh, ever have an on member vote about uh, a campaign because it immediately raises the bar for all other campaigns uh, and decreases uh, the spontaneous nature of these campaigns. So if we have an on member vote, it should be about the ethical question of whether we should be encouraging people to, to spread um, but uh, I am actually with, with Yanis in that uh, it's, it doesn't make much sense to have this discussion on a European level given the very great difference between countries and uh, in Greece uh, it will be clearly no and in France it will probably be clearly yes um, just based on the different situation of, of renting in these uh, countries. I think what we should do and we should do this before um, the call with the French NC is to include this in our next newsletter to encourage people to go to, uh, to the forum and uh, discuss the issue uh, and uh, also to, to learn from the different countries ex uh, experiences um, and to have this uh, deliberation which they clearly uh, want to have and to have a broader basis uh, from which uh, to, uh, to plan their own uh, campaign. Janis? Um, just listening to all this, an idea came to me that um, maybe we should send an, a message to the French NC, to other NCs, even to DSCs, and ask them whether they want to propose any particular payment strike. A rent strike, water strike, electricity strike, whatever payment strike they have in mind. And ask them, you know, and tell them that this is in, initiated by the French NC that are proposing a rent strike. And give them, you know, a very short period of time, three days, four days, max. And whoever wants to speak to this is invited to the next CC meeting 
to put forward briefly, briefly, a very concrete proposal that they will have to have sent to us before about a particular payment strike. To see what kind of interest there is across Europe from DSCs, from NCs and so on, for different kinds of payment strikes. If the NC from France are the only ones who want a, a payment strike and happens to be a rent strike, well, that's fine. And we can, we can, we can think about it, right? Um, but let's see, let's, let's, let's feel, and I agree entirely with Judith. Uh, absolutely, Judith, you're absolutely right. If it's just, just a question of a campaign, just do it. Uh, the difference in Mona with Italy was that in Italy you had the referendum. And there we had to take a decision as a transnational movement, okay, of what would our position be, what would we tell people to vote for in the referendum. And that's not the same thing as a campaign. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was saying that this is an issue very uh, important to Italians, uh, but we already had this referendum. I know, but there was a referendum. This is not a referendum. This is a campaign. So campaigns yeah, should be either coordinated properly or just go ahead and do it. And we will support you just because you're doing it. Uh, I was saying it would be successful to campaign on it in Italy because people uh, feel this, uh, this thing. Well, our job is to, co to coordinate the movement. So why don't we coordinate the movement? Why don't we ask different NCs and different CCs, uh, CCs, DCs, to tell us what they think whether they have any payment strike generally in mind. And then and look at it, and not in order to tell the French and see not to do it, but to, you know, to inform them that you know, the Italians think this, this the, the Turks think that, the Greeks think that. Why don't we just do something that combines the collective thinking of the movement? That's deliberation, that's serious deliberation, the first step. step. Mm -hmm. Megran. If I can just add my voice to that deliberation, I mean, what disturbs me a little is that any payment strike is a tactic. We're putting the cart before the horse if we're asking people, have they got any payment strikes in mind? Surely we should start first with the problems that people are experiencing because maybe a strike is not the best way to deal with that problem. So that, that's, that's how I would further that discussion at this level. Makes sense. Okay, does anybody have anything to add or we can wrap it up for this part? I, I believe that anybody who speaks has to pay the price for it. So I think that Mechran should, should script a, a short, you know, half a page letter to DCs and NCs saying there's been a suggestion, very briefly, there's been a suggestion for a rent strike in France. There are other suggestions you know, counter suggestions that it wouldn't work in other countries, maybe it won't work throughout France, maybe it will. There are al alternative payment strikes that we can have regarding, you know, targeting privatized water utilities or electricity companies. Um, do, you, you know, do you think that a payment strike of some sort would further the cause of DiEM25 generally and in your country or neighborhood in particular? come to us with proposals. Will you do that, Macron? I'll bite. I, I won't formulate it exactly like that, but you'll see my proposal. I'll bite. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we can all look at the, the, your proposal and, and react by email. <laughs>